testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. Uh, boxing is back. We had a we had what would be considered a major card on ESPN. Uh, we got to see one of the brightest young fighters in the sport, Shakur Stevenson, 126-pound world champ, uh, fighting in a non-title fight at 130 pounds. Look, first, I want to say I was so excited to have boxing on again today. I mean, it was a good day today. We had boxing on um, for the first time in, in three months. And we had a Facebook card on uh, Saturday night, which King Carlos Molina uh, took care of business. But, I mean, this is the first real card um, that we've had in in months. And it, it was good. I woke up today and I was really looking forward to this. Unfortunately, it was complete mismatches. Uh, the cash uh, fight against Metcalf was was fairly – Somewhat a little bit competitive. Uh, Metcalf did okay for himself. He showed well. Um, but besides that, there was not a whole lot. You know, this was one side of traffic in all the other fights. Um, but, you know, let's get into it. Uh, let, let's, let's, let's get into it because Shakur Stevenson looks like he didn't miss a beat. Uh, Shakur Stevenson was, was sharp as can be. Um, and full credit to, uh, Felix Carabello, he, Carabello. Oh, um, he came in looking to win the fight. You know, he was aggressive. He did what he, you know, the only thing he could do, try to pressure, try to bring the fight to Shakur Stevenson, try to get to his body, try to slow him down. It was just levels and levels and levels and levels. I mean, let, let's be fair. Um, Shakur Stevenson really gets better work in, in the gym. I mean, this was a bad sparring session for him. And look, the fight that he had scheduled for back in March wasn't any great shakes either. It was Mariaga. You know, I mean, Mariaga is better than, than Carabao, but um, it, you know, Shakur wasn't taking a, a tough fight either way. So it's not like, you know, we lost out on a great fight and got a bad sparring session instead, even though we didn't get a bad sparring session. He, 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 um, Shakur Stevenson, the fight he was supposed to have back in March that was canceled just a day, I think just a day before the fight, um, canceled by New York, wasn't any great shakes, right? It wasn't some fight that we were all marked on the calendar. It's, it, but it's good to see Shakur, you know. Uh, it was great to see Shakur. I mean, he was sharp. He was coming forward, um, walking an overmatched opponent back. He did everything you'd want him to do. Um, he shined. He was so accurate and so precise with his punches. The only thing I would say is you can see the lack of power may affect him later in his career as he fights the very, very best at 30, 35. You know, I don't know what his plan is. Um, I, I think if he goes to – I still want to see the Warrington fight. Um, but if he goes to 130 he's got and stays at 130, he's got great options there. Um, I'd like to see him stay at 26 if I could and, and see him fight Warrington and Russell Jr. But he's massive for a, a featherweight. He's a huge featherweight. I don't know how much longer he can realistically make that weight. If you listen to the MCR podcast, uh, me and Matt talk about how he probably can't make that much that weight much longer. So I don't know if he's done with that weight moving forward, if he's a 130-pounder. Um, but he'll be fine at 130. It's, if he goes up more than 130, so that's going to lightweight. He doesn't have the power, I don't think, to really damage those guys. You know, talk about Floyd moving up. Floyd had power in the smaller weight classes. Stevenson doesn't. Stevenson hit this dude with everything. I mean, flush power shots right on the button one after another. And they didn't have much effect. Again, he's going to outstyle. He's going to beat up opponents. You know, he's going to – at 126, I, he may beat everybody. I mean, I, I would still pick Russell. But I think he beats Warrington at 130. You know, Prichel's a great fight, but it's skills. I mean, I'm a big Prichel fan, but I don't know how Prichel would handle the skills and the speed and the combinations and the reflex of Shakur Stevenson. I'd probably pick Stevenson to win that fight. 
Now, I don't want to build too much on this, but you can see it's all there, especially at 126 and 130. Shakur Stevens is going to be a tough, tough out. You know, again, the only guy in those two weight classes I, I would pick to beat him at this point is Gary Russell Jr. Um, at 130, if, if Santa Cruz wanted to come back down to 130 and have that meet up, that'd be interesting uh, because Santa Cruz would be so much bigger than him. But right now, Shakur Stevenson looks to be perhaps the best young American fighter um, in the world. The same Brandon Figueroa, um, you know, Tifima Lopez, th those are the best American fighters, I, I think, you know, under the age of 23 or whatever, 24. Um, th those are the guys. Um, outside of that, again, this was one-way traffic in, in basically every fight. It was bad sparring sessions. These guys got better work in the gym. But it was good to have boxing back. It was good. I want to get into the two heavyweights. Uh, Jared Anderson has a lot of skills for a guy that size. Um, obviously, he's got a ways to go. He's got a, a long way to go. Uh, but he's more skilled than a guy like F.A. Ajabe. He's better than Nathan Gorman. Again, I'm not going to put anyone with, up there at that age with Dubois yet. But this kid's got a, this kid's got a ton of skill. Um, I don't know how long he'll make. It could be four or five years until he's he, he's competing at the highest level. But you know, be patient with him. He's got a lot of skill. He's got good snap on his punches. I mean, for a guy that size, his hands, his foot speed, his athleticism is something really old. Jared Anderson's got a future. You know, he may be the next great American heavyweight. Just give him some time. Uh, Golden Boy's got to have uh, – well, right now he's a cruiserweight. Tristan Cruz from Dallas. Um, that kid's the goods. That kid's for real. So there's a lot of good American heavyweights. Now going to my mother country, uh, Italy. In the second bout um, of the evening, right now, I don't know about, right? I mean, he, he fought a guy. That lost to the Uber driver. No, no disrespect, but the guy he was in with really had no reason to be in the ring at all. Um, but what you saw from Guido was good. Um, I don't know how high he can go. I, I don't know about his power, although he got knocked out in 54 seconds or something like that, but completely overmatched slider. Um, I, I, I don't mean this to be insulting. He's got a little bit of a heavyweight version of, of Mick Conlon where I don't know that he knows what he's doing with his punches. It's still kind of an amateur style where he's just throwing punches, looking to score. Um, he can do well, right? I, I, I just don't know if that's a future heavyweight champ right there. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know if that's a future great heavyweight. Like, you look at Jared Anderson. He's like, that kid's got a real bright future. You look at Tristan Count Cruz, so that kid's got a real bright future. Guido Vianello, he'll, he'll, he could be a top 10 to 15 guy. I don't know if he can get any higher than that. I'm not saying that this guy is the future of the, of, of the heavyweight division. Although he's six foot six and athletic, I'm not sure how high his ceiling is. But I, I do want to see him move up. He can't keep, he's already 26. You know, he's not 20, 22, 18, like Tristan Kalkuri. He's 26. So let, let's move him up a little quicker, and let's see what we got. What did you guys think? Uh, compare and contrast. I, I think Anderson is the better prospect uh, than my boy Guido Vianello. Um, I, I think Jared Anderson could be a future heavyweight champ. I, 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 just, I can't say that right now about my boy Guido. And I want to, you know, um, being Italian myself, I, it, it would be great to have – an Italian heavyweight champion of the world, uh, especially in, in the wake of all uh, how hard Italy got hit by the coronavirus. But, you know, I think it can be good. I, I just – I see a ceiling there because, I, I mean, I, I don't see an overwhelming professional style, and he's already 26. Now, I know heavyweights develop late, and, you know, five, six years from now, he's still not old. He's 31, 32. That's not old for a heavyweight, maybe. I, I don't see him, you know. He could be a guy like a Brian Jennings. He could have a career like that. But I, I don't see him being a whole lot better. And, that, and that's a good career. He can make some good money. You know, he can sell out the, the Prudential Center in Jersey. He could sell out, uh, you know, the small theater in the garden, you know, selling tickets to Italian-Americans. Um, he can. And, and he'll have a following in the fan base. 
because he's not bad. He really isn't bad. They can match him right and try to make him look really good. He needs to be fed that top-ranked diet. Uh, but Jared Anderson is true. Jared Anderson, um, again, it's a matter of time with that kid. And, and again, Daniel Dubois is the leader in the clubhouse with these young heavyweight prospects. Dubois is the best one. And then everyone comes below that. Um, they, they got a lot, you know, but Jared Anderson, Tristan Calcruz, and Daniel Dubois, the future of heavyweight boxing is bright. It's really, really bright. Uh, and that takes us to the last thing. Uh, Robesley Ramirez, um, really good. I don't know how that guy lost. Uh, he knocked out a kid from Laredo, Texas, uh, Rafael Morales with a body shot. This performance today was absolutely spectacular. Lots of body shots, too. I mean, this kid's a ferocious body puncher with those, you know, traditional Cuban skills. I, I know everyone's going to sleep on him because he lost. I get it. He lost to a nobody. He lost to a journeyman. I get it. And that ain't great. The kid's good. Uh, I want to see, again, he needs to fight better competition. But when he fought Rafael uh, Morales, who's only had a few fights, I think he's only 18, that kid's good. Right? And, he, and he disposed of him with a body shot. Ramirez has a future. They, I, I, I would move him up. Let's see what we have in him. I'm not going to say he's a world champion. That he's going to think, okay, he lost his first fight to a journeyman, which he did, and he wasn't supposed to. He shouldn't have. He should have disposed of him, but he didn't. Let's get Ramirez back in the ring quickly against someone who can offer some resistance. And that was my really only complaint. It was great to have boxing back, and it really was. And I was kind of expecting this. Look. They're going to have to save money because there's no gate. There's no gate revenue. There's only TV money. So this is what they're, they're going to do. They're, they're going to match their star and their prospects, Ramirez, Guido, Jer Anderson, and then, of course, their short, uh, star, Sikor Stevenson, against absolute nobodies. Then they, what they can do is pay their star a little less money, you know, a little less, because they say, look, look who you're fighting. It's either this or... Or you're going to have to miss this fight entirely and not fight until maybe next year. What do you want to do? All right, I'll take this fight for a little less money. Still a check. Keeps me busy. I get a win. I get a date. Let's do that. Um, and then they can pay, pay the B side far, far less money, right? Because, uh, look, I mean, Carabello, if, if he didn't want the fight, you just go to the next guy. You just go on down the line. I, I think they paid him 50 grand. If he didn't want it, just go down and go to the next guy. He doesn't have to rank in the top 15 because it's not a title fight. So you just keep going down the line until somebody takes the money. And when someone takes the 50 grand, they get the fight. And they get blown out and they get beat up um, like Cabrera did today. Uh, but, look, I was kind of expecting this. This is, like, that was my thought. You were going to get these really, really, really one-sided, really easy tune-ups, glorified sparring sessions. <laughs> And in this case, with Coach Stevenson, a bad sparring session was like, get that guy out of the ring with Stevenson. Um, but boxing is back, so that's good news. And we have a card on Thursday, and then a card next to I think there's three cards in ESPN. Actually. So we got a lot of boxing ahead of us. Uh, it's an exciting time, now. it really is. Um, let, let me know what you let me know what you, you thought of tonight's cards. What, was it too one sided? Were you just happy to have boxing back yet? Did you like seeing the heavyweight prospects? What were your thoughts on Guido and Jared Anderson? I'll leave your thoughts, comments below. Please remember to like and subscribe. Um, hit the uh, blue bell icon to get those notifications. Uh, from Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.